Hello and welcome to another Sales Force and Trailhead tutorial with myself, Jonathan Fox. And today, this is going to be a slightly different video. So, as you can see, you can see my pretty face. Um, I have decided to trial a new piece of software and have my video on the tutorials whilst I'm going over what I'm teaching. So today we're going to be looking further at the Lightning Web Components and Salesforce Data using Lightning uh, Data Service. So what we're going to be looking at today is our contact list. Uh, we've got our list view here that we've created. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. There is a lot more you can do to make it a lot better, but we're going to start off with the basics. Um, so as you can see, we've got three columns and we've populated it with the records that we have within our org. So let's head over to Visual Studio Code and we can see how it is. So as you can see here, we have our Lightning Web Component. We have another piece of uh, JavaScript and we have an Apex controller. So let's just dive straight in and look at the actual Lightning Web Component itself first. We have our root template tags, we're positioning it within a lightning card, and we're saying that if we have contact data, then we are going to render the rest. And as you can see, we're using lightning data table, we're specifying the, uh, the key field, which is the ID, uh, the data, where it's going to come from, which is from contacts.data. And where are we getting the columns from? We're getting them from our columns variable. So let's have a look at our JavaScript. Here we are doing the usual, importing our lightning element. We're using the wire decorator, so we need to pop that in there. We're going to be using our LDS utils, um, which is available on GitHub, and I'll show you where to get that in a second. But we're going to be using that um, to help make things look a bit nicer. And then we're going to be importing a couple of fields, so first name, last name, email address, and we're going to specify where we got them from. So we're going to get them from Salesforce schema contact, and then obviously the field that we want. And then finally, we're going to be using our controller, uh, our Apex controller. So we're going to be calling that here from the Apex uh, and then the class and method that we're going to be using. Here, we're going to define our columns, pretty straightforward, our labels, our field names, uh, and the type that the field name is. And then finally, actually getting the data. So we're going to create the errors uh, variable to hold any errors that we do get. We've got our columns that we're going to specify, which are our columns that we've uh, created up above. And then we're going to get our contacts using our wire decorator here, calling the get contacts from our Apex class and then controller uh, a method. And then we're storing it in contacts. Should we get any errors? we are going to um, use the reduce errors, which I'll go into in a second. In our Apex controller, uh, what we have here is in our Apex class, in our contact controller, we've got uh, R enabled, obviously, so that we can use it as part of our Lightning Web component. Uh, we're creating, a, we're going to be passing back a list of contacts and we are creating that list of contacts here by doing a SQL query, um, to get our contacts the field names that we need um, obviously in this case if we had a lot if we had thousands and thousands and thousands we wouldn't want to get them all maybe we want to put in some sort of filter um, and, and restrict our SQL query maybe we want to pass in some parameters and the user could select those parameters this is where start thinking about it getting creative with it um, and this is where you can evolve this lightning web component into something that really fits your needs so we pass it back and that is how this lightning data table is created. Now, looking at this uh, LDS utils, what this is doing is reducing our error message into something that is nice and easy to read for the end user. Now, I aren't going to get an error message. Um, as part of the module, you do force an error message uh, and it displays it nice and neatly at the top, which you can see it would be going here. Um, however, I'm not going to be doing that for this because I want to show you that it works. So let's finally head back over to Salesforce. And as you can see here, this is what is produced. Our lightning card with our lightning data table. And we've got our three columns, our first name, last name and email address. And as you can see, populated really nicely. 
thank you very much for taking your time and listening to this. Uh, everything that you could need uh, to create what I've created here. And if you want to go into a bit more detail, different ways you can call data, um, check out the Lightning Web Components and Salesforce Data module. For the Lightning, um, Lightning Data Service Utils, you can get a lot of already provided recipes here, Lightning um, Trailhead apps, Lightning Web Component recipes, and the team provide a whole host of different um, already built components that you can then take away, have a look, um, and, and, and use to help you a, a, a in your creation. Here, LDS is what I um, took, and then I've got the, um, no, it's not, sorry. Um, what I got is the utils, which is here, LDS utils. Um, and I took this JavaScript um, library here. If you have any comments, queries, or questions, please post them in the comments below. Otherwise, feel free to give me a shout out. Let me know how you feel this video went. Until next time, thank you very much.